All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, chapter seven. Um, yeah. So chapter seven, uh, the first section of chapter seven expands on the ideas from chapter five a little bit, but we kind of changed gears here at just its had, but um, it's going to connect a lot of things. So we're going to talk again about probability distributions, which we talked about um, a long time ago. Um, and then I kind of put some real world application to it. So this is a probability distribution. Um, we're going to um, use X, a P of X a lot in this class for a variable interest is X. It's called a random variable. This is a probability distribution for rolling two dice and adding them up. We've done this one before, way back in the beginning, chapter six. Uh, sums two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and 12. And their corresponding probability. So this is just kind of a review right now. Um, the first question I have here is to... Um, find the mean and the variance and remember the variance kind of goes with the standard deviation right so just to remind you that the standard deviation squared is equal to the variance and the reason we want the variance instead of the standard deviation as you may remember from chapter five is you can actually use the variances to combine distributions so we can add variances together which we did in chapter five you can't add the standard deviations that math doesn't work um, <clears throat> Just a fact, like if you take these numbers and do it, you'll see it just doesn't work. So we need that variance, which is why we're kind of changing to a little bit of variance. So these are the same formulas I gave you way back at the beginning. Um, first formula here is the mean is equal to the sum of all of the numbers times the probability. So you just do 2 times 136, 3 times 236, 4 times 336, add them all up. And then the standard deviation or the variance now. So I'm taking the square root off this, right? So if I went to this, it would be square root of that. So you take each one of the data points, subtract the mean, square it, multiply it by its probability. We're not going to have to do this math because our calculator is going to do it for us, right? Uh, so just remember, list one, list two. So it's uh, one variable stats, right? One variable stats in the calculator. So my question here is just to find the mean and the variance. Um, uh, you can just do that with one variable statistics, right? List one, and then your frequencies are, whoops, your frequencies are list two. So we're just going to change the wording on you just a little bit here. It's the same thing. We're going to give you this new term. It's called expected value. The expected value of a random variable is just the mean. So for like this problem, if you type list one, two, three, four, five through 12, list two, all those probabilities, do one variable statistics, you're going to find the mean is uh, seven, I think. Seven, 7.5, doesn't really matter. Um, but that mean is now called expected value. And the reason it's called expected value, we use this uh, terminology E, is it's, this is a really good real world application. Like when you're gambling, we're gonna do a little bit of stuff with gambling in this chapter. It's called the expected value. So it means on average, on average, how much money do you win or how much money do you lose? Here's a really good example of a real world uh, problem. <laughs> this is the Wisconsin lottery. Um, you buy a ticket for a dollar and then these are the at possible outcomes so there's a one tenth probability that you win a dollar and so on all the way up to one out of 120,000 chance of winning 900 dollars. so the question here is just to find the expected value and interpret it in the real world situation so the most common mistake right now is people are going to put list one one two three 1850 150 900 i've already put these in my calculator um, probabilities that match and then hit the button and they get an answer. The problem is we're missing something here. So remember in a complete probability distribution, all of these numbers need to add up to 100% or add up to one. Okay, I already did the math for you. They add up to 0 0.2207, not one. So if we just do this math, um, our calculator's gonna go this times this plus this times this plus this times this and then it's gonna divide by this, but that's a problem because it's not equaling 100%. And the reason it's not equaling 100% is because they take out the most important cash prize, which is the zero. They kind of nicely leave that one out because they don't want you to know about that one, right? So zero, I did a little subtraction here for you also, has a point, point 0.7793 chance. So we need to add that one to our list, okay? And once we do, now it's all on my calculator. I can just go to one variable statistics, uh, list one. My frequency list is list two. And just so you have these numbers, uh, we may need them. The mean or expected value 
is 0 0.601, and the standard deviation uh, is 4.04. .04. So what that means, expected values on average, on average, uh, a ticket, a person who buys a ticket will win 60 cents. Okay. Remember, you spent a dollar for that ticket, though. So really, in the real world application would be, on average, everyone loses 40 cents. The standard deviation is four dollars and four cents. It's a pretty big standard deviation. That's because you have some bigger prizes. Okay, so we'll kind of uh, touch bases a little bit. So now the next question that that comes is how do we combine these? This is find the expected value in the standard deviation if you buy three tickets. So you may remember recentering and rescaling, which we're going to review here in just a second. But if you buy three tickets, if you buy three tickets, the mean is just three times the 0 0.601 and the standard deviation. So remember, you're just multiplying um, everything by three in essence, right? Because there's three different ones. So the standard deviation gets multiplied by three also, okay? And we'll come back to that idea in uh, just a second. Um, another really common uh, real world application, we're gonna come back to this one here, is uh, insurance company. So gambling's one. Gambling is a big one that has expected values, has outcomes, how much you expect to win, that sort of thing. Also insurance companies, which by the way is gambling. Um, we might have a discussion in class a little bit about insurance. But here's an example where a woman wants to buy a $5,000 insurance policy against burglary. How much should the company charge her? Right. So what this means is I buy a policy. And if I get burglarized, I will get $5,000 from the insurance company. It's not exactly the way it works, but this is oversimplifying it a little bit. Um, but so my policy is worth $5,000. So that means, like I said, if I get burglarized, I will get $5,000. If I don't, I get nothing. That's how insurance works. A little bit like gambling. Do I gamble? Do I pay for this insurance or not? Um, the insurance company wants to decide how much to charge her. So the insurance company has to do some math. So insurance companies actually hire mathematicians. They're called actuaries. Um, <clears throat> pretty common job for an insurance company. And what an actuary does is looks at probabilities. So this actuary does some digging. <clears throat> and again, we're going to oversimplify it a little bit. And they decided that um, no burglary, the probability of this person not getting burglarized is 95.91%. The probability they get, they get burglarized is 4.09%. So this comes from data. Uh, past data from studying stuff. It's car car insurance is the same way. Which cars crash more? Which ones get stolen more? Yada yada yada, that sort of thing. Um, and then remember, if they don't get burglarized, there's no payout. And if they do get burglarized, the company has to pay five thousand dollars. So if I just do um, an expected value again, so the expected value would be zero times 0.9591 plus, and I can do this in my calculator also just with lists, right? List one and list two, but this is pretty simple because that first number is zero. So 5,000 times 0 0.0409 is $204.50. So when they ask these questions, um, how much should they charge? It's always under the implication that the policy or the game is fair. And what fair means is that everyone's going to break even. Clearly, in the real world, it's not fair. The insurance company doesn't want to be fair because they don't want to break even. So we're going to say they're going to charge $2 and $4.50. However, they would charge more, right? Because they need to charge more to make money. right? But just in terms of staying fair, um, that's how that works. Um, so you can also combine... Uh, distribution. So this is just a little reminder about recentering and rescaling. We've had this before. It's going to look a little bit like math mumbo jumbo, maybe. <clears throat> Suppose the probability distribution has a mean of mean and a standard deviation of sigma. If you multiply each value by D and then add C, what happens? So you might remember, I hope, that the new mean is the old mean multiplied by D and added C. But the new standard deviation, I actually have variance here instead of standard deviation. The new variance or the new standard deviation is the old one uh, times that D. So let's do this. The standard deviation is D times the old standard deviation, which means the variance is we're just going to square them, right? Remember, the variance of the standard deviation does not get impacted by that plus C. So this is recentering, rescaling. What this allows us to do 
is combine uh, some problems like we did from last chapter. You might remember from last chapter that if we have two distributions that we're adding or subtracting together, you can just add their means. And you can also add their standard deviations. We never subtract standard deviations because we combine two. I'm sorry, not standard deviations, but variances. We can add variances. We never uh, subtract the variances because when we take two distributions and put them together, it always needs to get bigger, not smaller. So this allows us then to do a question like this. So we got this person who, um, or that Wisconsin lottery, who each week uh, dances, takes dance lessons uh, for a certain amount of hours and also tutors. So they pay to take dance lessons. So here's information on dancing lessons. And then there's a different probability for the number of hours. So it's a 40% chance that they dance for zero hours, 30% chance of one and a 30% chance of two. And then that's dancing. So they're going to pay for those lessons. And then there's tutoring. And these are the probabilities of their tutoring one hour, two hour, three hours, four hours, and their corresponding probabilities. This person uh, makes $12 an hour tutoring and they spend $8 an hour dancing. So the question becomes, what's the expected value and the standard deviation for the total amount of money that this person makes or spends uh, during this week? So this is like per week, all right? So uh, I did a little math for you. So I'm gonna, this kind of combines all the ideas, the ideas from this chapter, chapter seven, plus the ideas from last chapter. So I did a little math for you just so you can see this mean here, whoops. This mean here was, uh, I got it here, uh, 90 cents or 0.9, sorry for a number of hours, 0.9, no money yet. Um, and this standard deviation was 0.831. And then this mean was 2.3 hours. And the standard deviation is 1.1. So since she makes $8 an hour dancing, or sorry, she spends $8 an hour dancing, so money spent then, which is the dancing, is gonna be that eight uh, times the 0.9, right? So we're, in essence, we're just taking that point, that each one of the hours and multiplying it by eight, which means I can just take the mean and multiply it by eight. So we get $7.20. And then the standard deviation, so this is the mean. And then the standard deviation is I just multiply that standard deviation by 8, the 0 0.831 times 8, and I get 6.648, okay? So that's for the uh, dancing. We're going to do the same thing, money earned um, from tutoring. We're just going to multiply these numbers by 12, right? So 2.3 times 12, I've done this math for us, is $27.60. The standard deviation is 12 times the 1.1, which gives me $13.20. So now I want to put them together, right? I know the amount, there's like two different problems I've done now. But now I want to put um, together. So we're going to say um, we'll go tutoring minus dancing, right? Because we got to subtract that money. So just like last chapter, we're going to take the numbers from one and from the others and combine them, but it's a subtraction problem. So we're going to go tutoring minus dancing is going to be $27.60 minus the uh, $7.20, which is $20.40. So that's going to be the average money made per week. That's the easier part of the problem, I think. The standard deviation um, remember, I can't do standard deviation, I can only do variance, so I have to do a square root. So the standard deviation is going to be add the two, the variance is going to be add the two variances together, which is the 6.648 squared plus the uh, $13.20 squared. So now I have the new variance, but then I take the square root of that to get the new standard deviation, which is 40. So that's actually um, last chapter stuff kind of work together. So on average, this person makes $20.40 a week with a standard deviation of $14.78. So that's a pretty good introduction to this idea in this chapter. We're going to do a whole bunch uh, with practice problems and homework tonight. We'll talk more about it in class um, tomorrow or the next day whenever I see you then.